This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video for vet students and pet owners, sponsored by Topio Vets. It is shown that if a dog contracts certain diseases and is not treated, it may die. For example, this terrier cross, female, 14 years old, who has not been spayed, has been profusely discharging reddish brown liquid from its vagina. Through some palpation of the uterus and some blood test that was done, the vet has diagnosed this dog with pyometra. The only treatment for this dog is to spay it. Knowing that time is running out for the dog, we had to do the diagnosis and the blood test immediately. Sunday, 27 April 2014. This terrier cross 14 years old female, not spayed, came in yesterday with vomiting and uh, was given the IV drip with different light. Today looks much better, but uh, now you can see this morning or so, lots of dirty red brownie discharged from the vagina. So this confirmed that the dog vomited because of pyometra. It probably was a close pyometra because the owner said they didn't see anything. They didn't see anything at home three days ago, but now the pyometra has opened up, so it becomes open pyo, and the flow of pass from the uterus is a lot. But because of this uh, drip, uh, the dog looks much better now. So they want to bring home and ask me uh, what will happen if you go home. I will say that the dog will continue to give a uh, will continue passing vagina discharge and uh, and uh, will, will die maybe within a week because of the infection although antibiotics can can stop the in in infection now this dog had breast tumors on one side breast tumor on one side and uh, and so uh, Another vet had removed one side of it. Then now the other side has tumors again. So, so this is another problem. But now you can see that this dog suddenly is much livelier. And uh, I have asked to give glucose IV for, for about 10 minutes. In addition to the Hartman, the Hartman was given earlier on, and uh, and with Betril and Spartan G6, this dog is no more, no more uh, lethargic. So now the owner has to decide whether they will agree to a emergency spay or just bring the dog home. This was the original intention was uh, treatment for one day with drips and then uh, bring home bring the home the dog the second day. On the same day we did a blood test and these were the results. You can see that the values are extremely high especially for the total white cell count which is one two four. Normally Anything over 17, let's say 20 or 30 or 50, will be considered high, but this was a record high of 1, 2, 4. And the neutral fuse is nearly 97%. As you can see, it's very, uh, it's almost nearly 100%, when the normal should be 60 to 70%. Now the absolute in green, absolute is one two zero. One two zero. When the normal, the absolute numbers are three to eleven point five. Now we go and see the platelets. The platelets are low. This indicates that the blood is toxic. So that's why the platelets are lower than normal. At one 
0.03 compared to 200 to 500 and uh, in this dog there is a condition called septicemia where it has a lot of bacteria in the blood and lots of toxins produced by the bacteria so the case is a septicemia case but surprisingly after two days of IV drips and dufolite antibiotics and uh, spasmogistic the dog actually was very alert and active as you can see in the video and uh, it doesn't look she was sick at all now this is a 14 year old dog female she had breast tumors early on on one side and then now last two days I saw the, the other side had breast tumors in a row as well so overall owner decided to take the dog back and uh, and uh, the dog was given antibiotics and painkillers and has gone home as at 3.30 p.m. Sunday, April 272. On the second day, we immediately prepped the dog for operation and after the operation, it was hospitalized here at Topayo Vets. The footage is from the operation. April 28th, 7.45 p.m. This dog had the dirty blood discharge for the last few days actually. The owner decided not to operate yesterday and brought the dog home after treatment. The white cell count was extremely high and there was a lot of neutrophils as well. So this was a case of open pyometra. Actually it was a closed pyometra which has opened up. Now, this morning I talked to the owner and the owner said that the dog has become weak again and uh, the vagina discharge keep on coming out. So I advise uh, emergency spay as that's the only way to save this dog. Otherwise, she would just die from the toxemia, septicemia. So the owner brought the dog in and was, it was, uh, she was spayed at 2 p.m. by Dr. Daniel. And now it's 7 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. You can see the dog is much more alert and there's no more discharge. She has drank some water and now we give the food and medication and put further in. Uh, and you can see that uh, the dog actually is really hungry. It's really hungry but very difficult for her to eat. And you can see the AD dies. I put the medication in and uh, the dog really uh, likes it or it seems to like it but not as much but anyway so the main thing is to see the operation site this was done uh, done about uh, six hours ago by Dr. Daniel the dog was paid actually and uh, in these type of cases normally I would do is just open the big incision and take out the uterus. This uterus was swollen with pus. It's bigger than those ordinary sausages you see. Okay, and uh, there's no need really to use a spay hook. But overall the owner came and saw the big swollen uterus and uh, so I'm, I'm quite sure this 14 year old dog will, uh, will survive and uh, uh, live a, a longer life. Now she had two days of drips and so she, she actually was quite fit for surgery. Uh, April 28, 2014, 8 p.m. So on the last day, the vet gave a summary of what has happened. Okay, April 29, 2014, Tuesday. Now, this dog had a severe infection of the uterus or the womb and this is quite common disease in old dogs, old female dogs that has not been uh, sterilized. Now, in this case, I've done several videos on uh, uh, Pyometra, so there is nothing uh, new about doing another video. So, in this case study, I would want to say that many of us as vets, we are very busy, so we don't uh, bother to follow up. Now, in this case, the dog actually passes a lot of 
reddish brown discharge from the vagina and uh, I did advise the owner to spare her urgently but uh, I told the owner that this dog had a poor chance of survival due to the fact that she had septicemia and from the blood test result as you can see a dog has septicemia when the total white cell count is very high 1 to 4 as compared to 6 to 17 and then the neutral fields about 97% and the absolute number is 1 to 0 now normal dogs this is about 60 to 70% and the absolute numbers of neutral fields are actually 3 to 11.5 as you can see this nearly 10 times the higher range and uh, furthermore now we look at the platelets the platelets when they are very low this shows that there is toxic toxicity inside the blood so so that uh, instead of being 200 to 500 it's 103 so this three one two three leukocytosis neutrophilia thrombocytopenia these three are abnormal and this shows that the dog has septicemia septicemia so the chances of surviving on under the operating table during anesthesia is very poor and so I told the owner that uh, that uh, the, the survival rates are low less than maybe 20% based on the clinical science and the blood test results now, no x-rays was done to save cost so in any case the dog was diagnosed with close parametra but uh, after one day at the clinic the dog suddenly discharged a lot of reddish brown blood, vaginal blood and so the close parametra became an open parametra so based on, on the chances that the dog is uh, very sick and the survival rate is very low as well as the cost the higher medical cost of uh, spaying a dog with parametra as compared to spaying an ordinary normal young dog so the owner has decided not to proceed with the surgery after all if you think about it if the, if the dog is going to die and you pay a large sum actually it's about $800 and uh, so in this case the owner did not feel that uh, uh, they want to do it so they took the dog home yesterday a day before yesterday so yesterday as we all best are very busy normally we don't, don't bother to, to follow up but I follow up on this case because there was a little boy a little boy about uh, maybe 12 years old who was very uh, sad and crying so I asked the father what happened to the dog she said that the dog was still passing out a lot of the reddish brown blood which you will see in the other video and uh, it's also uh, lethargic it's not, not eating so I told him that it's best to, to get the dog spayed urgently in emergency spay and not to wait till he finish work and then come in so he brought the dog in in the afternoon and uh, since the dog had two days of uh, intensive treatment with drips and they were like so and antibiotics and painkillers so Dr. Daniel operated on the dog and uh, yesterday at 2 p.m. and as you can see today is uh, 12 p.m. yesterday at 2 p.m. operated on the dog and, uh, and the dog recovered very well actually you can see the dog is very active and there's no more vaginal discharge uh, otherwise before that there was a lot of discharge from here reddish brown, dirty brown discharge and this part was swollen too but after the operation as you can see with uh, antibiotics and painkillers you can see the dog seems to be very active now in these old female dogs normally sterilization of the female dog is best because they do get breast tumors in old age but not every one of them sterilized females seldom get it but they do get it but seldom the chances of getting it not getting breast tumors are rather rare now as you can see before the the surgery on the first day I can see that all these breast tumors 
were at least three times larger than now, probably due to the fact that the dog had infection by Metra and also due to ovarian influence. But now that the ovaries have been removed and you can see that the breast tumors have shrunk, but it's not gone, it's shrunk. Now you look at the other side, there's nothing here on the right side, there's no breast tumor. The reason being, there's no big breast tumor, the reason being that one vet had, had operated on this side two years ago. And uh, whether he did advise spaying or not, I wouldn't know. Or maybe the owner didn't want to spay the dog, and some owners don't like to spay dogs. So you can see, it's a very interesting uh, clinical study that two years later, on this part which had very large breast tumors and removed by the vet, there is nothing, practically no recurrence. Huh? No recurrence, but you can see there is a small one coming up there. A small nodule, this is a nodule. It's coming up here. But overall, this is definitely quite free uh, with the passage of time. Now this part was not operated at that time because there were no tumors at that time, so the vet didn't, didn't operate on the right hand side, uh, on the left side. But now you can see today the left hand side MG5, the mem memory gland number 5, is nodular and then it's spread up upwards to MG4, this is MG4, the memory gland number 4. Okay, then uh, it's spread to memory gland number 3. You can see there's some hard nodules below. Memory gland number 2 is still so far so good. And uh, Overall, I do advise the owner to get, get this breast tumor removed about two weeks later if he wants to. Other than that, I would say this dog will go home and will be quite uh, alive and, 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 and uh, make the little boy happy because normally as fathers, one might be pragmatic about the cost, but for the children, the, the dog is family and uh, if we don't uh, get the dog treated, when treatment can save the dog, then uh, it will be very bad for the little boy because uh, obviously he can't afford the medical bills. And uh, in this case, I do reduce the bills by about $300 so that uh, at least this dog has a chance to survive and so a little boy can have his best friend back. For more information or inquiries on our services at Topaya Vets, please call us at the following number or email us at the following address.